All right, folks, we've talked about these hair issues uh, in this country when black people are being targeted. Well, a Louisiana principal is literally trying to defend what she did to a black seventh grader. Uh, check this out. Uh, she told this young, young man um, if his decision to braid his hair uh, meant he was trying to, quote, be a gangster. According to Ashley Thorne, Dr. Angela Messman, the principal of Calvary Baptist Church, excuse me, Calvary Baptist, a private school in Slidell, uh, asked her son, Dalen, about his hairstyle. Ashley and her husband, Damon, met with Messman the next day to discuss the incident. During the meeting, Messman told the parents she had some concerns. Quote, I've never had a student wear their braids like that. I've had teachers personally come to me and ask about his hair and what I thought it, about it. I have seen children grow up in this school and I've seen them change. So I was just checking to see where we are. I just wanted to see his heart. Our culture is changing. Little boys used to have regular little haircuts. I'm seeing a lot of young people listening to a lot of rappers pushing for drugs and doing things opposite of Christ. Ooh, so in a second, we're going to talk to Ashley Thorne uh, about this. Um, my goodness, what the hell, Matt? Uh, what I find particularly insidious about this is that she was trying to almost encapsulate these respectability politics in the, from a standpoint of like, I really care about this child. I'm worried about you rather than my discrimination and prejudices on display. And it's Louisiana. I mean, there are a lot of black people in Louisiana. Braids are very common hairstyle. So to think that that is somehow tantamount to being a gangster and to have the audacity to ask this kid that and put him in a position where he has to advocate for himself for his hairstyle and his culture is just disgusting to me. And it's especially disgusting that it comes from the same kind of thing that we see white people do, just like the sheriff in my county. He's always talking about a refer uh, or going back to Mayberry. Right. And this erstwhile time lost in society where everybody was living in, a, in Pleasantville and that one never existed. And two dog whistles, not black people. And that's what happened in this instance, and it's just disgusting. And I hope that this family considers a Title VI lawsuit if this school is receiving federal funding, because there's entirely too much information about this for you to continue making comments like this, particularly to a young child. Uh, Kelly Bethea Jones right now, uh, communication strategist. Kelly, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm tripping on, I, I, I was just concerned. Mm -hmm. I had concern about him. Where, where, where are we going with this? Yeah, um, it, it's unfortunately not news to me that white people don't understand black hair. Um, Three, I think that is four, one of the... Five. I'm sorry. Oh, I was hearing feedback. I Kelly, keep going. Keep going. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's unfortunate that, um, like Matt said, this was kind of wrapped in this very much Karen concern in that uh, uh, backhanded compliments, passive aggressiveness and the like, but also uh, considering if I'm reading correctly, this is coming from a private Christian school. Um, it is deeply rooted in Eurocentricity, um, specifically Eurocentric Christianity, um, as if Jesus's hair wasn't like wool and probably was braided too. Um, you know, people don't really think about that. And I don't understand how when you have biblical stories about how Samson's strength came from his hair and how you have, you know, almost uh, tenets of how to not cut your hair, um, for that to be ignored for the sake of Eurocentricity is is incredibly hypocritical, but is also very on brand for for American Christianity. Um, it, it, it's all to me. This is called nutcase land, Michael. Roland, there's there's so many things wrong with this story. OK, first of all, she says that she she sees rappers pushing drug dealing 
and all type of negative things like this. But she doesn't call out the right white corporations that pay the rappers to push drug dealing. She doesn't talk about that. She talks yeah. about um, his uh, his 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 braids, his actions. They're not Christ like as as Kelly was saying. When, when we talk about Yeshua, it's more likely that uh, his hair was in locks or in braids than it was uh, straight or blonde. And and then you know. Um, she talks about how concerned she is and she's seen children change and things of this nature. Well, maybe if you have more black history in this school, maybe if you have more history dealing with the contributions that African-Americans made to society, uh, maybe they wouldn't have those problems of them changing for the negative, uh, et cetera. So, you know, these are these are these microaggressions, dog slash dog whistles that that we have to deal with on a daily basis, man. So hopefully, uh, th hopefully th these parents are able to come to some type of reconciliation, and there also needs to be some uh, cultural bias training instituted at that school as well. Ashley and Damon Thorne uh, join us right now. Uh, glad to have both of them here. Uh, Ashley, uh, I'll I'll start with you. I, I, I'm just I, I mean. First of all, describe the reaction of the two of you sitting there listening to this white woman say these things like, like your child just lost his mind and is going off the deep end because he got braids. Right. Um, of course, in the beginning, we, you know, I was angry, you know, hearing that come from my son because he was confused. He didn't understand why he was being questioned in the first place about braids. Um, so, of course, sitting in that office with her and hearing the things that were irrelevant to what we were there about, it got to the point where it was more funny. I couldn't be angry because she was so ignorant to the fact that she didn't think she said anything wrong. You know, uh, I'm struck by this whole this. I, I, I'm struck, Damon. I'm struck by this whole deal. Like, like he's going through uh, some kind of crisis. I mean, it's just. I, I just want to make sure is everything okay? Is is he losing it? Like, like what the hell? It's crazy. So, so my son, he's into anime. You know, he knows nothing about gangster or anything like that. So when she asked him that, he was like. He didn't know what she was talking about. So when he comes to us, now we have to explain to him, you know, why, like, you know, oh, there's nothing wrong with your hair, son. There's nothing wrong. You didn't do anything wrong. I just have to explain to you this, how people, you know, people view um, certain things in this nature when they're closed minded, you know, that they're not even open to anything. Um, during our recording, we recorded the interview and um, I mean, it's 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 crazy when I was trying to let her know how long braids been around since before Christ and uh, how it was used um, as an art form. And she just started talking about rappers instantly. And I was like, what are you talking about, ma'am? We're talking about braids. Of, it was a bunch of irrelevant situations that she brought up that had absolutely nothing to do with our son. We even asked her several times, like, Okay, but what does that have to do with Dalen? And she's like, oh, Dalen is so sweet. He's so respectful, which we were like, exactly. You didn't see a change in his behavior. You didn't see a change in his attitude. You only saw his hair change. And we're asking her, so why would you question if that's not a problem? Oh, no, the braids are fine. So we were confused. She couldn't give us a straight answer. And at that point, I guess, like she told us, shrugging and saying, Oh, all I can do is apologize. And of course, that's that's not enough. That's not enough. So, uh, first of all, the decision for him to change his hairstyle, the, was it yours? Or did he say, you know what, I want some braids? He, he had been asking. Yeah, he'd been asking to change his hairstyle. He had worn his hair just kind of like mine for like a long time for a long time. So he just wanted to change it. So we actually... And he saw other kids at the school with braids well, right, right, so he was just like, hey, can I wear my hair a different way? Um, my wife and actually I did braided it. his hair for him. I did it. And, you know, he was excited about it and then went to school the very next day and then this happened. So... Yeah. 
and, and, and really what this is, I mean, I mean we see, we've seen these things before. We've seen, uh, I, I'll tell you, I remember when um, I was, um, the Dallas Mavericks had a media day. Uh, and I remember we were sitting at the tables, other journalists, and this white, this white male journalist start talking about how Allen Iverson was a thug. And I was like, what the hell are you talking about? And he was talking about his hair. I said, well, Cherokee Park, Cher, Cher, it was, I got Cherokee Parks, uh, who played for the Mavericks. His ass wore a mullet. I said, well, right. what the hell wrong with his head? And, and, and I jammed him up and I told him, I said, see, I said, first of all, I'm, and so I mean, I started start pressing his ass. And so, uh, and so he, he realized that, oh, I stepped in it. And I said, let me tell you something. I said, this is what y'all white boys do. I said, y'all white boys get together and y'all make these statements and y'all write these stories. And then you discuss it on sports talk radio. I said, then all of a sudden that then becomes the narrative uh, all around the country. And what you're seeing, and what you're seeing is it, in, the, in this principal's mind, the moment she see braids, she's thinking, Oh my God, that's a thug. That's a gangster. Right. Instantly, instantly. Yes. And I asked her, I said, is that protocol to ask every student that comes in with braids, is that protocol to ask them that? And she's like, oh, no. So I'm like, okay, well, again, no, why did you ask my son? You know, my son, he had the first thing, like I said, initially it was anger. Um, of course, when he came home that day, we talked to him about it. And I just kind of wanted to see how he felt. And he was confused, and I asked him, you know, well, what did your friend say? Because, of course, he's pulled aside by the principal. Of course, they're going to wonder, oh, what happened? Why she pulled you to the side? Well, he told them, and I said, well, what did they say? And, of course, um, one of his fellow students said that was racist. And I said, well, how did you feel? He said, I agree. And I said, you have every right to feel that way. And I asked him, was he offended? And he said, yes. And I told him he has every right to feel that way also. Um, were, so have y'all taken this thing higher to the school board, to board of trustees? Uh, what, what's next for you? So actually, um, someone, uh, suggested we seek some type of legal uh, counsel because, uh, on the recording, she, I mean, we never even brought up race now one time and she did. She started talking about black people and rappers and all this other stuff. And we was like, Ma'am, what are you talking about? We're talking about my son. Right. And he she brought got up raised. Sa- she brought up sagging pants. She started and bringing up sagging pants. Just all these my stereotypes. Son, my son doesn't sag at all. If you see him, he actually wears his pants a little too high <laughs> up to his belly button. You know, so it's so funny. I had to start bringing up this stuff. Right. And uh, I was just like, you know, and I told her. I did. I told her. I said, ma'am, you know, I wish you would open up your mind a little more. Um, apparently, you, you know, you lack some kind of cultural training right. or something because, you know, this is nothing uh, for you to be feeling however you feel about it. This is nothing for you to be feeling that way. My son has braids. That's it. Right. Uh, you know, um, it. and it's funny because, you know, how many, you know, kids that have shot up these schools, how many of them have braids? You know, right. Like, are you offended by the other hairstyles or the as she called it, the regular cuts when right. she made this. Yeah. She's like, yeah, um, I'm used to kids with the normal, regular haircuts. And again, that doesn't describe our son. So um, we're seeking legal counsel. We have wow. yet find somebody. Um, we're looking. Yeah, we're looking. For legal counsel, which is why we haven't released the recording, because we want to make sure we do this correctly. Right. Um, it's a private school, so of course there are our steps, but this particular board that they have, um, it seems that they stand with her. Yeah, they don't really want to talk about so it. So we're trying to, I don't want to let this be swept under the rug because she's comfortable with doing this. She's done it before, same kind of situation. Um, and I guess she gives them this, well, I apologize, you know, and that supposed to be it. I don't think we should sweep this under the rug. She's she's done it too many times. She doesn't need to be in any authority over children. There should always be consequences for uh, everyone's actions, especially those in high authority like that. You're the principal of the school, so you have to lead by example. And I don't want to just bring about awareness. I want to actually do something that actually right. 
uh, create some type of change, whether it's, you know, her losing her job or she needs to understand that there's consequences for her actions. You're not allowed to go around asking kids, a 12 year old, um, if their hairstyle, I don't know, insinuating it's something gangster or something right. negative about it. And then goes on to say, oh, well, um, you, how you wear your hair and your clothes reflects God. Making it seem Making like him his feel hair like there's something wrong with what he's right. doing and he's done nothing wrong. Um, all right, folks. Look, uh, keep us abreast of what happens uh, and uh, good luck in your battle. Thank, Thank you, you so much. All right, folks, back to our Roadmark Unfiltered video in just one moment. When you talk about blackness and what happens in black culture, we're about covering these things that matter to us, uh, speaking to our issues and concerns. This is a genuine people-powered movement. There's a lot of stuff that we're not getting. You get it, and you spread the word. We wish to plead our own cause to long have others spoken for us. We cannot tell our own story if we can't pay for it. This is about uh, covering us. Invest in black-owned media. Your dollars matter. We don't have to keep asking them to cover our stuff. So please support us in what we do, folks. We want to hit 2,000 people, $50 this month, raise $100,000. We're behind 100000 so we want to hit that. Y'all money makes this possible. Checks and money orders go to P.O. Box 57196, Washington, D.C., 20037 0196. The cash app is dollar sign RM Unfiltered. PayPal is R Martin Unfiltered. Venmo is RM Unfiltered. Zelle is rolling at rollingsmartin.com. 